So uh, you're all very welcome. Uh, Fergus Dolan here from NALA. I'm delighted to have you here this morning for our webinar on resources and materials, free soil literacy classes. And we're delighted to have Kathy Gardner from the Emergency Reception and Orientation Centre in Balahadrine as part of Galway and Roscommon ETB. And, and Kathy will be facilitating for you today. So over to you, Kathy. Hi guys, um, welcome and thank you so much, uh, so many of you for coming to this webinar on Monday. Um, uh, my name is Kathy, I am an ESOL literacy tutor and I have been teaching English for about eight years, but I've been teaching ESOL literacy for the last three and a half years in Balahadrine. And where I work, if you don't know about the Emergency Reception Orientation Centre, um, it's basically where Syrian refugees who are coming to live in Ireland, it's where they live before they go to their homes in the community. So um, there's a school on site there and they have classes every day from Monday to Friday. And I suppose the reason that's relevant today is that half of our students will start learning the alphabet when they arrive. So the vast majority of the work that we do and that I do is focused on literacy and acquiring reading writing skills. So kind of having done that now for three and a half years, I, I, I think I have uh, quite a lot of resources discovered. There's been a lot of Google searches, uh, a lot of fruitless Google searches, but I, I think now I've found um, stuff that's really useful. Um, and I know that it can be hard. Maybe you've experienced it's really hard to find materials for this level. Um, you get a lot for native speakers. You get a lot just for teaching English. Um, but for teaching English to people who can't read the language, you know, it can be difficult to find things specifically for them. So hopefully I can help you with that today. Um, it's a very hands-on subject. So today is going to be a little bit hands-on. It's all going to be very, very practical because that's just what I find useful. I hope you find it useful too. Um, so I'm going to get straight into it now and I'm going to describe what we're going to do today. Um, so we're going to look at um, adapting. First of all, sometimes we need to adapt resources like course books, for example which are not maybe always very accessible to literacy learners. Um, we're going to look at making your own worksheets with a literacy focus. So if you're designing a worksheet, what activities can you use in order to practice the skills that these learners need? Um, and also just to be kind of interesting and diverse. And then we're just going to look at teaching aids and resources in general, from uh, online resources to books, to things that I have made uh, that I will be sharing with you today. Um, so that's the plan. We're adapting, we're making, and we're looking at existing resources as well. So first, we're going to look at adapting materials. And we want to just think about whether or not they are accessible for an ESOL literacy learner or not accessible for an ESOL literacy learner. Um, so course books, for example, course books are not designed for literacy learners. Um, they're designed for people who can already read and write. So sometimes there, if we're copying from a course book, there might be a couple of things we need to tweak or change to make it easier for our literacy learners to kind of engage with that. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing here for a sec. And I'm going to put a link in the chat and I want you to open that link and it will take you to a little activity and this activity, you have to categorize something as accessible for a literacy learner or not accessible for a literacy learner. OK, so I'm putting that in the chat now. OK, so if you go to your chat down the bottom, open my link. It says wordwall.net. OK. And once that's open, you can just start the activity, click start and, and you can do the little game that's there. And if anyone's having any difficulty accessing that, you can just let us know. Should be straightforward.
So it should take maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. I'm not sure how we'll know when people are done, when <laughs> we can't see their faces. Um, maybe they can give us a little thumbs up in their reactions if they want, if they're finished. You know, the reactions down in the bottom, in the bar at the, across the bottom. Okay, Janet, thank you. Bring the first one, Lynn. Great. Some people are finished. That's good. Thanks, guys. Okay. Yeah, or you can type in finished in the or, chat yeah, function. Also type in the chat function was, was, is another inspired solution. Thank you. Great. Super. Okay. What do you think, Fergus? Do you think maybe we've got a good? Yeah, I, 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 I think, think we could move yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. So let's just summarize or review what we looked at there. Um. So in the accessible category, we should have had things like font size fourteen, so a nice big font, double line spacing. Um, dotted and lined handwriting paper. So you might remember this from school, special handwriting paper. Uh, and fonts like Comic Sans or Century Gothic because they're nice and easy to read. Um, on the not accessible side, then maybe things like font size 10 because it's just too small. Um, cursive fonts, which would be difficult to read if you, you know, if you just acquired the alphabet now, you've got all this kind of stylistic squiggles. It's, it's going to be harder and slower to figure out what what that says and what that means um blank paper with no lines so i mean i'm learning how to do my handwriting now i don't know I, or i can't see how tall my letter should be or if my letter should hang below the line because i've got no lines as a reference point okay and um, not very accessible for people trying to develop handwriting skills um a messy whiteboard you know, I know messy is a relative term, but messy here, I suppose, would really relate back to the handwriting again. So if, if your handwriting is cursive or is, um, you know, maybe small or, or cramped on the board, that's going to be difficult for learners. So, you know, I, I've heavily modified my actual handwriting when I write in school. You know, it's much more like print. It's very kind of clean and all the letters are separate and, and almost childlike looking. Um, and the last thing for not accessible, a worksheet with tiny lines for writing answers. So learners at this level tend to have large handwriting, so they need space to write. So these these little little lines that you see sometimes in course books are not really suitable and don't doesn't give them enough space. Um, so to summarize what we want, we want our font to be big and easy to read. Um, and we don't want that, that funny looking A or that funny looking G that you sometimes see in some fonts. Um, particularly if our learners are just learning to read and they've just learned the, the letter shape A and they've just figured out its sound and now I'm throwing this other weird shape at them and, and telling them to remember that that's also A. You know, early on, that might not be the best course of action. Later, yeah, sure, I can point out to them, you know, that's the same as A and we'll, they'll, they'll probably take that in their stride at that stage. Um, we want good spacing on, on the page. So space to, you know, see space to write, space to read clearly, and ruled paper or handwriting paper is best. So blank spaces to write in, not really supporting handwriting development. Okay, so that's accessible or not accessible. Um, so I'm going to give you your first task, okay? This is a short task, just for five minutes. Um, I'm going to link some handouts, and I want you to suggest just three changes you could make to make these handouts more accessible to literacy learners. So the things that we looked like, that we looked at before, uh, the font size, the type of font, 
you know, how much text is on the page? Is there enough space for writing? All of those kind of things. Um, um, I'm just gonna take over the screen here again. Um, so looking at, looking at this first one, guys. Um, so could you put your suggestions for what you would change about the first one into the chat, okay? Um, and just keep, keep, keep it brief and we'll see what everybody says, okay? So just type them into the chat there. Can we all see this chat now that I'm screen sharing, Fergus? Yeah. Yeah? I think it might just be. I can see, Kathy. I can see task sheet four and one look. Can I speak? I can, that's what I can see on the screen. Yeah, but can you access the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I can so everybody that. can access the chat. Okay. So someone um, says they would add pictures. Brilliant. Um, what else? Oh, it's coming in thick and fast now. Better keep up. They'd add pictures. The font, the A is not regular. Yeah, the font has that funny A. Different font, make it bigger. Make it three conversations, too much input. Okay, nice. Uh, different font again. Faces with the words would help. Nice. So people are hitting on that visual element. Draw people on the side. Yeah, good. Cartoon figures, nice. Larger font, less sentences. Yeah, okay. Very good. Brackets are confusing. Good point. Yeah, that's yeah. I didn't notice that myself actually. Too much in the bottom two bubbles. Okay, great. Font space and visual. Great. Use learner names. Nice suggestion, but kind of. Jody and Nick, maybe not names that they're familiar with. Okay, great. Um, lovely. Okay, brilliant. Um, so guys, we said a lot of the same things and, and you said a lot of kind of stuff that I didn't even pick up on myself when I was doing. So as an example um, of how you might modify it. So this is just an example I made to show if I incorporated all your suggestions, it might look like this now. Um, for example, uh, we've got bigger font. We've changed the font. The A and the funny A and the G are gone. Um, as a lot of people mentioned, we did reduce the amount of text. So on the left, it gives like three options for saying the same thing. That could be confusing, but also it's a lot more text to work through. But it might not, I mean, depending on a person's kind of experience, they might not realize that they only need to choose one of those things. So up at the top where it says, can I speak to Jody? Is Jody there? Is that Jody? Maybe they think they need to say all of those things on the phone, but we just need them to say one. Um, good. Um, also, someone else said about putting in visuals. Yeah, I stuck a little visual in the top just to establish that people are talking on the phone. So it's not face to face and it's not, you know, a text message. If this is a telephone conversation. Um, and then I did change the learner names as well. Um, for example, I changed to Alan <laughs> and Yusuf. So Yusuf, from my context, I would have a lot of Arabic speakers. So that would be um, a name that they would know. And Alan is, is easy to decode, you know, it's A-L-A-N. So that's an easy one to read. Okay, great. Um, I think everything that was mentioned there was incorporated. So that's fantastic. Okay. Um, can we do the same for the second one? Now, this one is very busy. Can you type your suggestions for this one? in the chat. Okay, I want to use real life items, caption them later, not enough space to write. A page perspective section, so we're definitely spreading it out. It's too busy, I absolutely agree. Yeah, take out the instructions, nice. Break this into four pages. Yeah, there's way too much going on. Hopelessly cluttered, nice. <laughs> Far too many tasks, absolutely. Make more work, too busy, great. Only use the picture section, nice. Okay, meta language not helpful, absolutely. Yeah, good stuff. Way too much, take out a lot, okay, great. Yeah, definitely, that's, that's, where, that's where I'm at with that as well. Declutter, less vocab, longer lines, take out the written instructions, okay, great. Guys, we're, we're, we're all very much on the same page here. This is fantastic. So. Um, I think we've had most of what we're going to say here. Um, so yeah, obviously your, your reaction to this is the same as my reaction, which is that, you know, even though this is from a beginner course book, it is, as somebody said, uh, hopelessly cut it, there's way too much going on and it is just not suitable for a literacy learner, even though it's from a beginner book. So, um, if I was to 
adapt this myself, I might make something that looks just like this. So again, I took taken out all of the text. Um, I'm just using the pictures. Um, so I could, if I'm using this on my computer, I could do a screenshot, uh, drop the screenshot into a Word document and then just kind of edit it from there. And um, if you're doing it at a photocopier at work, you know, you can just zoom in and blow it up and cut it out and, and, and typics out the words or whatever. Um, and, you know, with a page of pictures, and I think somebody said, just use the pictures, but with a page of pictures, we can do so many things. Um, so for example, we can work on our pronunciation and um, we can do the CD activity, you know, listening and repeating. Again, that's got a pronunciation focus. We can work on the initial sounds if, if we're still acquiring um, alphabet or phonics. So we could say, for example, what words start with the same letter or what starts with the letter M, money and makeup, uh, what starts with the letter B, uh, briefcase, book, uh, brush, for example. Um, we, if we're focusing maybe on syllables, we can count the syllables by clapping them. Um, so this kind of helps students with breaking words down if, if, if they're um, you know, developing their reading skills. So it might, you might be doing things like briefcase, wallet, purse, uh, credit card, you know, that kind of thing. Um, again, none of that needs any text at all. Um, we can play the usual vocabulary games, like you can mime using an object and your partner has to guess. You can do Pictionary and um, you can just test each other, you know, pointing to the picture. What's this? What's this? What's this? Um, and you can ask questions to develop the student's oral language, like uh, where do you put your money in my wallet or my purse? Um, what do you need when you're sick? tissues uh, what do you use to open the door you know I, I would ask questions like that just to kind of expose my students to questions like what and where and how and stuff like that so all of that can be done orally it doesn't need any instructions um, it's getting loads of listening and speaking practice in and making sure our students have really clear pronunciation and and, and also understand you know what sounds are in the are in these words and um, how many syllables or parts are in these words and all of those things prepare them better to read um so if i was to then make a second handout as some people said you know split this up into multiple handouts my second handout might look like this um so at the top you know for for my learners who are very low level i might just have a very simple speaking activity where they're asking do you have you know so uh, asking do you have keys do you have makeup in your bag do you have money do you have a credit card etc etc um so a very simple speaking task with a, a very useful structure um then they might write the words under the pictures and maybe complete a little writing task about what do you have in your bag i have glasses i don't have makeup i have money i don't have keys etc etc so here you know they're doing some speaking which they weren't doing in the original thing and um, they're sounding out words now Okay, so when they see the words in the box, they have to go mm, oh, ni, money, oh, money, money. Oh, yeah, that's that picture over there of the euros. So now they're actually practicing their reading before they didn't have to decode because the word was already under the picture. So um, then they write the words under the picture. So now they're labeling and this is giving them an opportunity to practice their handwriting. Again, they weren't really getting an opportunity to practice their handwriting as much before. And um, you can also focus then on the phonics, maybe you might look at some tricky sounds in the vocabulary and um, maybe the sh sound in brush or the E, Y saying E sound in keys and money, um, or you might work on the long A sound with the silent E in makeup or in a briefcase, for example. So you could do a little bit of analyzing or noticing the patterns, or if you notice your students have difficulty with, you know, a particular sound, you, you could focus on that here. Um, they also have an opportunity here to personalize the language. So, you know, talking about what what they have, what they have in their bag, you know, they might have something strange in their bag or funny or like very specific to them. And, and they might get to kind of talk about um, themselves a little bit there. Um, they could also read aloud what they write um, to the other students and the other students could listen 
to what is read and then report back or answer questions. OK, so then you kind of can turn the writing task into a reading task, into a listening and speaking task again. So we're getting loads of skills practice. Um, so, you know, there's there's just literally so much that we can do with just pictures. And we're also making sure that our students get speaking practice that is kind of at their level, writing practice that is at their level. And they're also definitely getting an opportunity to practice their handwriting and to practice their sounding out of words. OK, great, fantastic. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments after that section? Because I, I know I was just talking for a, a long, longish little stretch there. I so think if you have a question, you can type it in or you can unmute yourself and just ask, Kathy. Yeah. I'm just checking in, um, but I think everything that I said was a suggestion looking at the chat, uh, you know, they were all suggestions that people had already made. Would I leave out briefcase? Um, probably, yeah, it's not really a relevant word. I, I might even, um, with my students, I mightn't even do as many words as are there. Um, I might just, for example, do like six words or eight words. If I had non-literate students who, who were very slow to acquire vocabulary, yeah, certainly I would leave out briefcase and change out some of the things. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's old, it's an old word. <laughs> Uh, okay. Kathy. Yes. How often would you consolidate that? Would you do it at the end of the week or how often you would know, you review that? Do you know, I've actually, like with my learners now in my center, I have the lowest, lowest group. So I consolidate and review every single day. <laughs> but I have my, I have my learners Monday, Tuesday. No, sorry. I, they, they have another teacher Monday and Tuesday and then they have me Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So like everything is on the wall and I, I go back over everything every day and, and that can sound extreme but I would spend about 10 or 15 minutes reviewing so that would be just me you know um either asking questions or pointing to the, the vocabulary on the walls and, and asking what's this or just drilling our, our little structures you know so um I I do review and consolidate orally every day until I know that every person in the class really has it down and then I might drop it off to just once a week um yeah does that sound all right thanks Kathy okay um will we move on any other questions there they're lucky to have class every day slow slow <laughs> um yeah they're so lucky to have class every day you know and it's because they, they really have just arrived and we're orienting orienting them in in kind of Irish culture and services and stuff and uh when they move, they don't get as much class. So they can go from having classes five times a week to having just once a week for an hour. Um, it's very different. It varies a lot by county, it seems, but um, I think it's great that particularly they can at least acquire the alphabet and the very basic, you know, niceties of English and being able to say hello to people and name a couple of things and talk about your family and before they go and meet their neighbors. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, slow, slower and reverse. That, that I'm going to call that level one, level two and level three in my centre. Slow, slower and reverse. Um, OK, right. So that was adapting materials. Um, let's have a look at making materials. So, um, you know, I'm sure I can see from your feedback about the course books that, you know, you're you definitely see the flaws there in the design um, and you're probably already making your own materials. Um, so we're going to look at activities that have a literacy focus so that practice the skills of you know blending sounding out handwriting um when you're when you're making your own stuff you know when, when there's nothing there that you can use so here are some activity types um number one a picture dictionary um so this is a book that students get you can download it from the website twinkle.ie and i would give this to my non-literate learners so if they never went to school in their own country and if they never learned um, Arabic in my case and they can't read or write Arabic, you know, their, their, their progress is going to be a little bit slower um, and it's not really worthwhile for them to be writing text down that they can't understand when they go home. So I kind of start them off by just building vocabulary with something like a picture dictionary. So when I do um, vocabulary with the others, I give them the pictures on a sheet, they cut them out, stick them into the book, and then eventually they're going to have a page that says something like, um, it's got a picture of boy, a uh, book, banana, uh, 
bag and you know I'll, I'll be working on things like well what's the first sound there it's b b b and this symbol represents the b sound so it, it's kind of a, a nice way to acquire vocabulary and uh, work on letter sounds um another activity that i like is word shapes so here you have to write the word into the correct box um, and you've got to look at things here like the height of the letters. Um, so if the students aren't making their D's or T's or L's or H's nice and tall, they're going to put it in the wrong place. And if they're not putting their letter Y and their letter G and their letter P, have that dropping below the line, also this is going to kind of correct for that. So it focuses on the letter height, the position of a letter on the line, is it sitting on the line, is it going below the line, and just on handwriting in general. So you'll find that they'll, they'll, they'll put the wrong word in the wrong box. And when you point out to them why, they're kind of going, oh, OK, yes, I'm not putting that in the right place. So it's a great, great one for handwriting. Um, another one I like, uh, just taking out the first letter. That's a really easy one to make. You know, if you have an existing handout that has pictures and words, you can just delete the first letter. And um, I often dictate this just in case some students don't know all of the vocabulary. So I'll be saying man, and they have to go, oh, what's the first sound there? It's an mm sound. Okay, so what letter represents the mm sound? So it's working on the initial letter sounds again, and also the sound symbol correspondence so that they know um, that this sound is represented by this letter and stuff. And there's loads of worksheets like this on esolmaterialsireland.com, but also they're very easy to make or to adapt. Um, another one that I like now here, it, it, the example I have is a little bit childish, but you might replace the illustrations with the photo picture. Um, I, I, I've kind of made my own with photos, but this is a good illustration of what the task is. Um, so here we are reading and revealing. So where that dotted line is, you know, that piece of paper would be folded over covering the picture. So the student has to decode the word a letter at a time. So they have to go bus, 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 bus. Oh, bus. Okay, yeah, that thing that I, you know, drive to 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 work. Um, so it's encouraging. Again, they're practicing their letter sounds, but they also are practicing sounding out words and blending and stringing the sounds together to say a word. So sometimes students are great at going bus because they know what every symbol represents. But they're not great at putting them together, so they do need practice um, with the blending. So this is kind of a nice handy one just to cut up into little cards and, and kind of pass around. Or even just the idea of having dots representing each letter is, is, is very useful. Um, again, I got that on Twinkle. Um, here, again, just some kind of wordy tasks. You can have uh, gapped words or you can have scrambled words. Um, so with the gap words, you know, you could randomly delete letters or you could delete letters that you're focusing on. Maybe you studied the letters N and R this week and you're going to delete um, those ones just to see if the students know them as a way of kind of consolidating or re reviewing. Um, and scrambled words, kind of the same thing. So they've studied the vocabulary before and now this is just a little kind of review or test. Um, but it's good to, for checking to see if students can track from left to right. So in my context, the students are Arabic speakers, so they track in the opposite direction from right to left. And sometimes you notice when they're copying or when they're, um, you know, when they're copying from the board or copying from another worksheet or a book or something, they'll skip out a letter or they'll repeat the same letter twice in an activity like this. So it kind of just helps them with following the following tracking with their eyes from left to right, making sure they don't miss out anything and you you get to kind of see are they able to do that like i've given this to some students and what i get back even if the word january is in front of them what they write in the gap fill is just so completely off because they're just not able to perceive every letter because they're just at a very weak stage so um it can be a really really easy activity or it can be more challenging for someone who's just starting out um word halves are a nice one so um if you just make a table in a word document and put one syllable in one column and the other in another column cut them up and hand them out to students to kind of stick together and um, it's great for kind of teaching and reinforcing 
the idea of syllables. And sometimes I will dictate the words myself. So I'll say freezer and then we'll kind of say free and zer. And so they have to first sound out the first syllable free and they find that card and then they have to sound out the second part, the zer, and then put them together. So it's kind of modeling for them the how to approach a word that is has multiple syllables you know you kind of have to do it one part at a time and um, sometimes students will try and read a seven letter word all in one go and they'll either fudge it up or they'll leave out loads of sounds so giving them syllables tasks kind of help helps them with this idea of breaking words into syllables and sounding out um number eight then the old matching which is kind of you know a very basic bread and butter ESOL task. Um, but in the literacy context, it kind of has a different function, you know, because um, in, um, in a regular classroom, you just want to check and see if your students understand the meaning. Um, but with literacy, we kind of want to see how they get on with decoding and reading the words. So um, it's all about the sounding out. Are they able to go j uh, jam and then match it to the picture and you can see straight away what what they don't know like you can see maybe that they don't know the sound of a certain letter or they don't know how to deal with you know a double t or a double p they're not sure if they should pronounce it twice and um, and you can also see if they're just looking at the first letter and matching matching it straight away without reading through the whole word so you you kind of get to see their whole approach to reading and um, which is very useful um obviously another essential thing that we we all do i'm sure uh, tracing and copying to support handwriting um and letter formation and a nice website for that that i like is the teacherscorner.net because you can type directly into the handwriting template and you can add lines or edit lines and you can kind of see what the finished product will look like before you uh go and print the PDF or whatever it is. So it's, so it's, it's quite it's quite clear and it's nice. Um, two more, I think. Um, this is it's kind of a method more than a material. Um, it's called look, say, cover, write, check. Now you can do this on a handout that looks like this. You can do it um, in the back of the student's notebooks. You could do this on a mini whiteboard. Um, it is, for example, you write up a word on the board, they're going to look at the word Ireland and they're going to say it, hopefully, or sound out the word Ireland, okay? Um, then they're going to cover it. So you might cover it over on the board. They could cover it with their hand or whatever, make sure they can't see it. And they're going to write it again from memory. And you might get something like this. Maybe some letters will be missing. They'll be missing the E maybe because it's silent or they'll be missing the ah sound. Um, you know, for Arabic speakers, the, the character L in, in Arabic makes a la sound. So they often just write L where they should write LA, for example. Um, and then they're going to check and they're going to write it again and correct it. So the idea here is that they're using their knowledge of letter sounds to try and spell words that they already know. And then they're noticing their errors, you know, and they're going to be asking themselves questions like, oh, why did I forget that one? Oh, I forgot it because it's silent. Or why did I forget that? Oh, I don't know. I shouldn't have forgotten it because there's an ah sound there. Maybe I just wasn't pronouncing that word correctly. And um, so it's great for kind of developing noticing and, and correcting and self kind of editing skills, but also they're drawing on all of their alphabet knowledge all the time to sort of help them help themselves to spell words. Um, the last one then, the very last one, um, readers. Now, readers are, are, are hard to find. So I've, I've been making my own using bookcreator.com. And I make really, really simple readers. I mean, you, you might wonder <laughs> why I would even bother making them, but I think it's really nice for students to have books. So if we were doing feelings vocabulary, for example, I made a little book that says, how are you on the front? And inside it'll say things and it'll have a picture and a very simple sentence, like I am sick, I am happy, I am cold, I am hot. And maybe on the last page, I might put in some little, um, you know, writing and reading exercises, really simple things. Um, but it's nice because it's a way to introduce the high frequency words like I and am, and to and go and the and it and is um, in a sentence and in a context that they already know, you know, they understand the feelings. Now I'm introducing 
a few other little words and there they are they're reading a sentence all of a sudden whereas before they couldn't really read much of anything um so that's kind of the last one there um at the very end here, I just have a summary of what each activity type does. So when I share on this um, presentation or when Fergus sends it on to you, you will be able to kind of go and, and, and see all that there if you didn't get it all just now. Um, and I just very quickly just like to show you that the book creator site that I was talking about for the readers, for example, you know, you might make a little one about the weather, you know, saying things like it is sunny, it is snowy, it is hot. Um, or you might make one about, for example, places that you go. Um, and here I've used, all these pictures are from Balahadrine. So I go to school, I go to the supermarket, I go to the bank, I go to the post office. You know, so you, you can really easily add uh, images and stuff in this interface that are like personal or local and, you know, keep the languages as simple or, or as difficult as your learners are able for. Kathy, um, there's a question Sorry, there from that. Lynn. Yes. Asking, are your classes in person? Are you going into the center? Yeah, yeah, I am going into the center at the moment. So um, we are like, we, we were kind of a special category almost because the, like, because the students could be moved out to their homes at any time. It's kind of, after they released all of the guidelines for education and, and everybody can't go to school, like the next day there was this little footnote and the footnote was like, if your centre is really small, if you're working with literacy and numeracy and uh, if you're working with migrants or refugees particularly, then you can stay open if it's safe to do so. So we were kind of in a little exception category. And um, you see now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you my classroom in a minute. You'll, you'll kind of see how it's all laid out, actually. You, you, I can show you the Corona classroom in our centre in practice. Um, before I do that, does, would anyone like to ask questions about um, the activity types that I just showed or anything? I know I blasted through them there, but I think they're all familiar types of things that a lot of people would have seen. No? Um, so what I'm going to show you next is um, my classroom, um, which you might be interested to see. Um, so this is my room and <laughs> COVID restrictions, you can see here around my board, around the teacher's area, there's a big old yellow tape. So I've got a, a box that the students don't really set foot in and it's two meters. Um, Kathy, uh, I can't see anything in case... Can every, other people see things? Or is it just me? I, we, we, it hasn't I can't see anything either. I can't see. I am sharing my screen, yeah? Maybe try it again, Kathy. Just go back and do it again. And okay. That'll work. Yeah, okay. there's a message. Kathy has started sharing a screen, but... Do, uh, I'll, I'll just start anything? again. Oh, I might be on a, oh, the wrong window. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. No. Yes. Lovely. Okay. okay. Um, so this is my room. Um. You know, it, it's a sort of a warped photo, but it, it is a large room. Um, and you can see our, our whole coronavirus set up here. We've got a little sanit sanitizing station beside the door when the students come in. Um, we've got a big tape around the teacher's board, a big yellow box. And um, that's just for me to stand in and the students shouldn't come in. So if I'm in that space, I know that I'm definitely at least two meters away from everybody. Um, you can see the students' desks, there's only five in the room at any time, and they're all kind of taped as well on the floor, so they're two metres apart. Um, and, I, you know, I spray everything down every day, all the desks and everything, and kind of just, you know, students, if I need to give them anything, they're sanitising their hands before and after. So um, that's kind of how we're managing it. We're keeping class sizes really, really small. And my room has, you know, about three windows and two doors, so it's very easy to ventilate as well, you know. Um, so what I have here, this is called a thing link. I'm not sure if anybody knows about thing link. Um, it's basically you can make an interactive screen. So you can see here there's a, all these little uh, things to click into. So you can look at things up close or you can embed um, a YouTube link or a link to another website, for example, or images. And what I'd like you to do now in your groups is um, to explore my classroom 
Okay, so I'm going to send you this screen. You can interact with it. You can click into everything. You can look at the photos. You can read um, my descriptions and ideas. And at the end, when you've explored and you've looked into everything, um, there's a question mark down here. And this is a quiz on Google Forms. Okay, so we have some questions about what you saw in the thing link. Okay, they're, they're fairly, fairly easy. Okay, so you can do that. You can answer the questions with your group. Okay, I made a little uh, tour of Balahadrine. So this is uh, like a, from Google Maps, an image of Balahadrine town. And you, you kind of take a little tour and, and answer questions. So um, number one, uh, sorry, it's a little slow. Oh, oops. Oh no, I've answered that question already. That's why that's happening. Uh, so normally when I click it, a question pops up. So that's a picture of the library and it says, what can you get here? And the students have to say, okay, books, for example, and hey, it's correct. So now I'm, I'm rewarded with a picture of the local library, for example. So you can have a little kind of interactive task. It can be very easy, like just, you know, what do you get here? What do you buy here? Or what's this? You know, it could be very low level. Um, but you can also, for example, let's say I, so this is super value. What can you buy here? You can buy food. Um, let's say I want to set them a task um, about opening and closing hours. So I have this little button here beside the super value and they click on this and opening times. What time does it open? What time does it close? Does it, is it open every day? And they can follow this link to the super value website. And they will select oh no they don't need to select it because it comes up so here's our local super value Balahadrine Duffies and now they're going to look at this and they maybe complete something in their notebooks okay about the opening times and yes it's open every day oh but on Sunday it closes at seven o'clock for example so you can make it interactive and you can lead it to different places any 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 website you like, you know. Um, another nice feature here. So if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, my student probably would struggle with reading that. There's a little feature here called the immersive reader. So if I click on this, um, it will. What time does it open? What time does it close? Is it open every day? So it will read for me and I can click individual words as well. So if my student is like, oh, uh, I know that word. I know that word. It's this one. And they can listen. Does. Oh, does. OK. Um, and some of the words come with the pictures to explain what it means. So that one's open, um, for example. So um, that's just an example of how you could use this tool in, in an ESOL context. You know, you could have a picture of... Um, you could have a picture of a family and you could just do the family vocabulary. You know, each each person would be tagged with, you know, father, mother, sister, brother, daughter. But they can go in, they can look at the word, they can listen to the word, you know. And if that's just something you can share, you can send it on a WhatsApp, you can email it to them. And they just get to interact with it the way that you just interact with my classroom. So they don't need to register. They don't need to download an app. They don't need to do any of that setup stuff. And um, you can just send it out to them and, and they can kind of learn from that and you can put as much or as little in it as you want, you know. Um, Kathy, there's a question here from Tricia saying, is that a particular application you used? Um, it's a website. So it's a, the website is thinglink.com. So I just used it in my browser and I signed up. I have an, an account. I have an account. Um, and then you make it in the web page. Yeah, so it is a particular application called ThingLink, but it's a web-based, so um, I didn't download any software. Thanks, and, and Cathy said to me that she has seen one of the ETBs around the country is kind of a description of how to use it. So she's gonna try and find that, send it to me and I'll send it on to you. But if she doesn't find it, we're pretty sure that there'll be, if you just Google how to make a ThingLink, there'll be a lot of examples showing you how to do it. We, we got a training and I'm pretty sure it was recorded. So I think I, I could share that. Um, I see something else here. Do you use an interactive whiteboard? Uh, I don't have an interactive whiteboard. I just have a projector. So I could project it. Um, I also have two classroom tablets. So I, I could use it on the tablet as well. Um, just open it in Internet Explorer or in Chrome or whatever. Do you think this type of digital activities can still be used once we go back to the classroom? On student phones? Yeah, absolutely. It's... Um, 
definitely they could use it on their phones. You know, they might have to tilt it sideways to get the full view, but you don't need to have as big a picture as a map of a whole town. You know, you might just have a picture of a shopping basket and now you're just talking about food. So um, it, yeah, definitely. I, I, I could see the use for it, you know, and instead of making them do a big old handout, you know, their reading activity is something they're reading on a thing link on their phones and their writing activity is all oh, they're finding on information on different websites and then they're writing it down in their in their notebooks, for example. You know? Did I just bring in the Google map of town? Did I just bring in the Google map of the town into the thing link? I think what I did was I screenshotted it. And so I used it as a photo. So it's it's not actually an interactive Google Maps that you can zoom in and do all of that stuff with it it's just a screenshot and it's a photo okay is that all right um yeah so we'll definitely try and get that one um kind of sent on to you thank you for the amazing resources yeah great Woo <laughs> thank you um i've got one one other little uh, thing in store then and I, and I know we we're supposed to be finishing at quarter past so um you know you can be going all over the place, all over the internet, looking for things to use. So everything that I use, I, I put in one place um, and Fergus is going to send you a link to this. OK, it's a website. That just where, where I made it, I put all of the resources in one page. OK, um, so um, I'll just show it to you so you can see what's on there. Uh, one. Um, so I just called it. Oops. Esau Literacy Ireland. OK, and on the home page, there are resources for if you were starting the alphabet from scratch. So um, it's an, there's an alphabet workbook that I made that has, you know, all the letters, uh, vocabulary, upper lowercase, letter formation, matching, tracing, copying, yada, yada, yada. Um, and it has all the letters, you know, all the way through the same format all the way. So if you wanted a book, that's really useful. Um, a teacher's guide, how to use the book, um, you know, letter tiles, an alphabet wall chart, pictures for the wall chart, flashcards, um, a, a lot of flashcards for CVC words and that kind of thing. So they're my own resources that I made that, that I'm sharing. Um, and then over here under links is everything that I mentioned today. So useful websites. So English My Way, a uh, lovely low level literacy friendly course has videos handouts materials everything esl library all all of these websites have good stuff to download either courses or handouts um, that's an actual book itself uh, some of them are american most of them are english some of them are canadian uh, and then down here we have uh, some youtube videos and then at the very bottom, I, I put in a link to the book creator website that I use for making readers and the ping link website that is the interactive screens um, that we used to show you Balahadreen and to show you my classroom. OK. Um, we'll all have to go back to study great presentation. OK, great. Cool. Um, so that's that's everything that I have to share. I know it was a little bit rushed there at the end. Um, uh, I kind of wanted to maybe look back at some of the responses to the Google Forms, but I don't know if we'll have time. But hopefully the doing of the activity with your colleagues was, you know, was worthwhile enough to just have those discussions with people. Um, and yeah. Kathy, how long do your students stay in the in Balahadreen before they move on? Just Michael, um, how long do they stay? So it, it depends on when their houses are ready and that kind of varies from county council to county council. So um, it is, it's, to, to, to be clear, it's not the same as direct provision in the sense that they're not asylum seekers. So they are refugees, they yeah. have passports, they have, all, they have rights basically, better rights and the same rights as you or I. So um, they tend to go within, I mean, some of them will go quickly within four months but for most people, it's around six months. And then for a couple of people, it could be a year or maybe a year and a half. So like you, you'd have a couple of people where, you know, maybe um, I know there was there was a case with a family where there was a wheelchair user and then the house just didn't have access. So the whole thing had to be like redone. So that delayed their departure. But usually optimistically, let's say six months, but it could be a year. Yeah. OK, thank you. Okay, Kathy, um, 
I would just say thanks very much for an absolutely fantastic presentation. Um, you can see yourself from the chat that people absolutely loved it. The nice. comments are so <laughs> positive. So you Thank can see, you. everyone can see that Kathy put in huge effort into yeah. putting this together and showing you so many resources and ideas and tips for working with ESOL literacy students. So thanks very much, Kathy. Yeah, well, it's, it's a really hard job. I know I, I, I was doing it for a whole year and I was making all the mistakes and I had no resources and I didn't know what I was doing. So like, you know, I'd feel sorry for anybody who's starting out doing it for the first time. Like, where would you send them to go? Like, there would be no, there's no Holy Grail book. There's no course. There's no training. There's nothing. So, um, you know, I really think like we're all there. We're all doing it. We're all practicing. We have figured out through trial and error kind of what works and we found the best thing. So like, why not share it and pool it all together and, and help each other out, you know? Um, yeah. But thank you very much for all the feedback and participation. Uh, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, I'll just read out Mary McDermott's comments. I like it. I'd love to be a student in your classes. So that oh, sums it up then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thank so you. everyone's saying Thanks, Thanks, really, really positive things. Thank you. Uh, Agnieszka says, especially in the mixed ability group. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll send on everything Kathy sends me, the resources, the presentation. We've recorded this. It might take till next week to get it edited and put up on the NALA YouTube channel. But um, And if um, Kathy's on again tomorrow between uh, 1 and 2.15, and she's doing... Uh, it's ESOL literacy again and it's an oral language approach and then we've also webinar, ESOL webinars on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday so thanks again everyone enjoy the rest of your day thanks Cathy thanks a million thank you so so much bye bye have a good day bye bye see you